Chapter 2 Physical Features of India In this chapter, we will read about our country's physical features that is mountains, plains, deserts, plateaus and islands. While reading that, we will also know how they have been formed. So with no further ado, let's begin. India is a large landmass formed during different geological periods. I'll just show you a small section of the previous chapter wherein we can see how India broke apart from Australian plate and moved towards Eurasian plate. While doing so, it went through constant physical changes. You can see the shape of India as it was moving towards north. Now with this kind of massive formations, number of processes such as weathering, erosion and deposition have created and modified the relief to its present form. By relief, I mean the five physical feature that we spoke about in the beginning. By weathering, we mean change of texture or appearance of soil or rocks over a long period of time. It can be due to running water, wind activity, glaciers, etc. And erosion means the process by which the surface of the earth is worn away or displaced by the action of water, glaciers, winds, waves. And last, deposition is the end activity of erosion. When things go from one place and stop at another place, this leads to formation of new landmass, crust, plateaus, rocks, deltas, etc. So now you understand what all physical activities India went through. And not just India, many other landmasses over the time. But the big question is, how did we human come to know about it? I mean, we can talk all intellectually, but the base has to be through solid evidence. Therefore, scientists have attempted to explain the formation of physical features with the help of some theories. One such theory is the theory of plate tectonics. So this theory says, the crust, that is the upper part of the earth, has been formed out of seven major and some minor plates. And when these plate moves, they build up stress within and the rocks above collide, or sometimes large chunk of soil gets separated, leading to folding, faulting and volcanic activity. These plate movements are classified into three types. While some plates come towards each other and form convergent boundary, some plates move away from each other and form divergent boundary. In the event of two plates coming together, they may either collide or crumble, or one may slide under the other. At times, they may also move horizontally past. The movement of these plates have changed the position and size of the continents over millions of years. The land of India displays great physical variation. The Peninsula Plateau is one of the ancient land masses on the Earth's surface. It was a direct piece of Gondwana land. Let's now read about the Gondwana land. So the Peninsula region of India is the oldest land mass. It was a part of the Gondwana land. So this Gondwana land comprised of several countries like South America, Africa, India, Antarctica, Australia. So this was all one single land mass once upon a time. So what happened was the crust broke into number of pieces and everything started drifting apart. As you can see how South America moved towards the left hand side and Antarctica went towards the south and India and Australia moved towards north and east. So at that time India was a part of Australian plate. But then we got separated from that as well and we started moving towards north. And then what happened? It got collided to the plate which is much larger which is also called Eurasian plate. So before this collision there was all water in between the Indian plate and the Eurasian plate. And this water body was named as Tethys Sea. So all the sedimentary rocks which were there at the bottom of the sea, they started folding up. As a result, Himalaya was born. And that's why you'll see the land is uplifted in northern India. But in the northeastern side, there was a huge depression, meaning low land, which over the time got filled with the deposition of sediments brought down by the rivers flowing from the mountains in the north. And this is the reason why Ganga and Brahmaputra drains in that region. So this is quite fascinating, isn't it? I mean, getting to read all of this and going to those places and seeing those land features. No wonder the geologists enjoy what they do. And another thing is that these Himalayas and the Northern Plains are most recent landforms. Hence, they are also very high risk zone when it comes to earthquake. Because the land is not stable. Unlike Peninsula region, which is a complete land block that broke from the Gondwana land. On one hand, Himalayan mountains are unstable zone, but it is very rich in alluvial soil. So alluvial soil is formed from fast flowing rivers. And Himalayan mountains consist of high peaks. And these high peaks generate a lot of ice, glacier. 
and when they melt, they come rushing down, passing through deep valleys and making huge cuts in between the mountains and flow all over northern India and eastern India and finally drain into the Bay of Bengal. And we know fast flowing rivers that is running of water brings new soil and that is the reason the entire northern plain consists of rich alluvial soil brought down by the fast flowing rivers. But Peninsula Plateau is quite different than the northern plains. It is composed of igneous and metamorphic rocks. Igneous rocks are those rocks which are formed through the cooling and solidification of magma or lava. And metamorphic rock is a type of rock which has undergone change by extreme heat and pressure. And since Peninsula Plateau is the oldest landmass, therefore these two rocks are bound to be present there. Now we will read about the major physiographic divisions. They are the Himalayan mountains, the northern plains, the peninsula plateau, the Indian desert, the coastal plains and the islands. First one is the Himalayan mountains. We just read about how they were formed and also that they are geologically young and it consists of huge chain of mountains all residing in the northern borders of India. Himalayas is one of the most rugged mountain barriers of the world. The Himalaya consists of high peaks and due to the flow of fast flowing rivers, deep valleys and gorges have been formed. So this creates very ruggedness on the landmass. And this is the reason there is no railway establishment also. Like you don't have much of railway facilities and tracks in north part of India. Because you need a stable land. The length of this mountain range is 2400 kilometers and the width is 400 kilometers. And as you go towards the eastern side, it becomes much narrow by 150 km in Arunachal Pradesh. The Himalaya consists of three parallel ranges. The northernmost range is known as the Greater or Inner Himalayas or the Himadri. The mountain peaks over there have an average height of 6000 meters, 2000 short of Mount Everest, that long it is. So the core of Himalaya is made out of granite. And we have read earlier what are granite. These are rocks formed due to solidification of magma or lava. And which also tells that when Indian plate was colliding with the Eurasian plate, there must have been a huge volcanic eruption under the seabed, seabed of the Tethys Sea. And due to the solidification of that magma, granites were formed, which is now the core part of Himalaya. And on top from outside, it's snowbound. And we know this that rivers are formed due to the melting of these ice, snow or glacier. So I hope you understand this part pretty clearly. Now as you go towards the southern part of Himalaya, now this range over here is called Himachal or Lesser Himalaya. And obviously here the heights of the mountain peaks has to be lesser than the above one. So here it varies between 3700 to 4500 meters. So Peer Panjal is one of the longest and important range over here followed by Dholadhar and Mahabharata range. And we also have some famous valleys like the Kashmir, the Kangra, the Kullu Valley and this region is well known for its hill stations. And the last and the third part of Himalayas that is the outermost range this is called the Shivalik. And the width of this range is 10 to 50 kilometers. And the heights of the peaks in this region has to be very low that is 900 to 1100 meters. In this range, you will find mostly sedimentary rocks brought down by the rivers from the main Himalaya. So as the river comes, fast flowing river comes from top, they come with a full pressure and they bring huge chunk of rocks, boulders with them. And this range is also rich in alluvium soil. And some of the famous duns like Dehra Dun, Kotli Dun, Patli Dun are well known and they are present in this range. So this was all about the three important ranges of Himalaya. Till now, we understood Himalayas from top to down, north to south. Now it's time to understand Himalayas from west to east, or which is also called longitudinal divisions. So the extreme northwest, lying in between Indus and Satluj river, this part of Himalaya is called Punjab Himalaya. And regionally, it is also called Kashmir and Himachal Himalaya as well. And then as you move towards the right hand side, that is in between Satluj river and Kali river, this place is called Kumau Himalayas. And as you go further away towards the right hand side, the Kali and Tista rivers demarcate the Nepal Himalayas. And then there is another part which lies in between Tista and Dihang rivers. This part is known as Assam Himalayas. The Brahmaputra river comes from the easternmost boundary of the Himalayas. In the eastern side, the Himalayas bend sharply to the south. Here at the eastern side or the eastern hills and mountains are also known as Purvanchal. As we have read earlier that the land over here is low, there is a depression in the land. Hence, due to the running of Brahmaputra river, lot of sedimentary rocks have accumulated over time. And vegetation is also very dense. 
and due to this kind of combination there are many parallel ranges and valleys so some of the hills that comprises the purvanchal are patkai hills the naga hills manipur hills and the mizo hills and the next feature is the northern plain the northern plain has been formed purely because of three major river systems and they are the indus the ganga and the brahmaputra of course along with their tributaries as i've said before this plain is formed of alluvial soil and since we are reading about northern plain and therefore it has to lie at the foothills of the himalaya and it has taken millions of years to make it a fertile plain now an amazing fact is that the northern plain is densely populated it means if you see around the world most of human civilization resides in the plain area and it is purely because of the soil adequate supply of water and favorable climate since this plain exists because of the river system and rivers bring rich soil cover when they flow this makes that region full of alluvial soil and this particular soil is good for agriculture purpose and agriculture will lead to food production and thus add value to the economy and hence becoming the most productive part of india when a river comes from mountain it rushes into the plains there the river does not follow a uniform path it breaks into different channels due to deep gorges and rugged terrain so these channels are known as distributaries the northern plain is broadly divided into three sections the western part of the northern plain is referred to as punjab plains and it is purely formed by the indus and its tributaries and the larger portion of this plain lies in pakistan and the second is the ganga plain which lies between ghaggar and tista river now remember this the ganga river passes through haryana delhi up bihar part of jharkhand and west bengal to its east and then finally drains into the bay of bengal usually the northern plains are generally described as flat land but it has little variation in its relief basically i'm talking about different types of alluvial soil i am not going to explain about alluvial soil instead i want you to watch this video wherein i have specifically covered about alluvial soil in detail so just head over there watch it and you will get it pretty clearly the third feature is the peninsula plateau the peninsula plateau is a table land means flat land plateaus are flat land now it is composed of old crystalline igneous and metamorphic rocks The peninsula plateau is the oldest land block of a country. It was part of Gondwana land. Now here the plateau is broadly divided into two categories: the Central Highlands and the Deccan Plateau. So the Central Highlands lie right in the middle, that is to the north of the Narmada River, covering major area of Malwa Plateau. Just have a look at this in the map. So Central Highlands is bounded in the south by Vindhya Range, and towards its northwest, that is near Rajasthan, it is bounded by Aravallis. and the rivers that you will find over here is chambal sindh bitwa and ken so the central highland extends up to chota nagpur plateau in the east and the second division of peninsula plateau is the deccan plateau this landmass lies to the south of the river narmada the satpura range is the boundary in the north for deccan plateau and towards the eastern side mahadev kaimur hills and maikal range is the boundary another factual thing is that deccan plateau is a bit higher in the western side and slopes gently towards eastern side and this is one of the reason why majority of the rivers flow into the bay of bengal that is towards the eastern side so western ghats and the eastern ghats are the west and east edges of the deccan plateau western ghats are higher in elevation than the eastern ghats The stretch of Eastern Ghats is from Mahanadi Valley from Odisha to the Nilgiris in the south and the Western Ghats starts near the border of Gujarat and Maharashtra where it is given a name Sahyadri and reaches all the way till Nilgiris in Tamil Nadu so the highest peak includes the Annaimudi and the Doda Beta and in Eastern Ghats the highest peak is Mahendragiri so the Deccan plateau is known for its black soil and this is of volcanic origin hence the rocks are igneous and since soils are formed from weathering of rocks hence these rocks are responsible for the formation of black soil and the fourth feature is the indian desert it lies towards the western side near aravalli hills and desert consists of sand hence it is called sandy plain and this region receives very low rainfall below 150 mm per year it has arid climate which means hot and dry with low vegetation cover you will only see river during the rainy season luni is the only large river in this region and this region is famous for barchans which mean sand dunes and the fifth feature is the coastal plains india is a peninsula country the reason we are called peninsula is because of water being on the three side because if it is on the fourth then we would have been known as island so we have arabian sea on the west and bay of bengal to the east 
So let's read about Western Ghats and the Arabian Sea. It's a narrow plain and is divided into three sections. The northern part of the western coast is called the Konkan, Mumbai to Goa. The central stretch is called the Kannad Plain and it lies in the Karnataka region. While the southern stretch is referred to as the Malabar Coast which is completely in Kerala. Now let's move on to the Eastern Ghats. They are comparatively wider than the Western Ghat. It is referred in two parts. That is the Northern Sarkar, while the Southern part is known as Koromandal Coast. Some rivers such as Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri, they drain into the Eastern side. And on the Western side, Narmada and Tapi are the river that drain into the Western side. And coming to the last feature, the islands. So we have two sets of islands in our country. One is the Andamar and Nicobar in the Bay of Bengal and the other is Lakshadweep in the Arabian Sea. Lakshadweep island is a small coral island. Earlier it was known as Lakadweep, Minikoy, Amin Deep. and in 1973 we named it as Lakshadweep and the capital as Kavarati which is also the administrative headquarter of Lakshadweep. Coming to the Andamar and Nicobar islands, they are bigger in size and are more numerous and scattered. So the entire group of island is divided into two broad categories, the Andaman in the north and Nicobar in the south. So this island is close to equator, hence it has equatorial climate and thick forest cover. So before wrapping it up, I want you to watch this video. In this, I've covered about the islands in a much more detailed manner. I'll paste the link of the video below in the description along with the specified timer wherein you can click and watch it directly from that moment of time without having to watch the entire video. And with this, we have come to an end of this chapter. I hope you enjoyed watching it. So watch this video again along with chapter 2 of class 11 and you'll have a firm grip in understanding the structure and physiography of India. If you enjoyed these videos and see a purpose behind watching them, please like the video and comment down below. Until then, catch you guys later and talk to you guys on the next one. Peace.